I've got the video pulled up over here, so let's watch the video. Speeds are 18. It was changing lanes. Approaching Church Street intersection. So this is the whole video, starting from the traffic stop. Stop BP. By the way, so let's re- let's review here really quick what's going on. They were pulling him over because he did not have license plates. Legit enough reason, okay, because it was a new car. Then if that's the case, usually what will happen, and this happened to me once, you show them your temporary registration that you just bought the car, and they let you go. I've been, that as exact thing has happened to me. The claim is that the police say he drove a mile and a half to this gas station without pulling over. He claims it was less than a mile. There's no dispute that he drove a distance. They say it took two minutes, that he drove a distance to get to this gas station because he said he wanted to pull over in a well-lit area. So that's his story. But at this point, if you just think about it from what the police know, they were pulling somebody over. That person drove a long ways while they were pursuing him. Now, remember, if you're a cop, you're thinking all kinds of stuff. Like, why is this person still driving? What are they doing in the car that they're potentially buying time to do? Are they taking drugs? Are they hiding things? Are they changing clothes? Are they, in their mind, creating a plan, okay? All the police know is that this person has not stopped. Even in the lawsuit, they claim it was a minute and 40 seconds. A minute and 40 seconds, okay? We know a lot now as observers, but let's try to keep in mind what they might know then at that time. So the police are pulling this vehicle over. Let's just go with what the lawsuit says. A minute and 40 seconds. A lot can happen in a minute and 40 seconds. Driver, roll the window down. Felony traffic stop. Put your hands out the window. So he says felony traffic stop. I don't know what that means. I don't know what the felony is, but they already have their weapons drawn on the vehicle. Probably they're heightened because of the long time that he was driving. I would assume because of the long time that he spent driving the car prior to getting pulled over, the cops are a little heightened. Put your hands out the window. And But let me say now, also, I would have been really scared too. If I was the driver of the vehicle and I wasn't a criminal... And now I've got guns pointed at me. That's a scary situation. Okay? It is. Straight up. It it would be totally normal for somebody to be scared in that situation. Turn the vehicle off. Put your hands out the window. I can't tell. Put your hands out the window and turn the vehicle off. Put your hands out the window. He's not complying, Joe. Let me see your hands. How many occupants are in the vehicle? How many occupants are in your vehicle? Open the door slowly and step out. Open the door. Now, a lot of people at this point will say he's not complying, right? I, if it was me I, and, and trying to empathize with the driver there, I could definitely f- see how one might feel like the second they step out of that vehicle, they're going to get shot, right? You've got television telling you all day long that the police are out there to kill you, that police are horrible. If you don't know any cops, if you have been brought up, all your influences are telling you that police are going to kill you, and then you're in this situation and you're s- sitting there in the car and the police have their guns drawn on you and they're telling you to get out of the car. And in your mind, you're thinking, if I step out of that car wrong, if I take one step, if I turn my body one way, I'm going to get shot. I can t- completely see how that would be going through his mind. Get out the car. Open the door slowly and get out. Get out of the car now. Open. Now, there's another perspective of this whole thing, which is he was filming with his cell phone. That video is available online. He had his cell phone recording this whole thing. And if you watch his video, he does seem a little casual, almost smirking. But I can't get in his mind and know what he was actually thinking. I've smiled in stressful situations. I've smiled when I was scared. Uh, You just do it. It's like 
you can't just look at somebody and pretend to know exactly what they're thinking in that moment. So there is a video out there from hit from inside the car of him with his cell phone. Door, get out the car. Keep your hands outside the window. Keep your hands outside the window. Get out of the car now. Get out of the car. Now. Get out of the car. Now. Get out of the car now. Yo, look, guess what? I'm a brother too. I'm going to obey. Get out of the car. Get out of the car now. What's going on? You're fixing to ride the lightning, son. Now that's a, now he says, what's going on is you're fixing to ride the lightning. Son, I think he said. Now that means he's going to get tased. Getting tased sucks, I'll tell you that. And this other cop, the one that we just saw on our screen left here, is very aggressive. I can, t- I can see this cop right here on the left side of your screen, very aggressive with his language, with his posture, everything. I probably would have been pretty intimidated with him talking to me like that for sure. Get out of the car now. Get out of the car now. Get out of the car. Sir, just get out of the car. Work with us and we'll talk to you. Get out of the car. You received an order. Obey it. I'm honestly afraid to get out. Can I? Yeah, dude, you should be. Get out. All right, here's when I first saw this video and the guy in the car says, I'm scared, and the cop says, You should be. I was like, Damn, that's kind of jacked up, man. Like, that would only escalate the situation worse. If this dude's, let's just, in, in good faith, let's assume everything that he's saying is true, and let's assume everything that the police are doing is justified, right? with them pulling him over, legit traffic stop. They're legitimately concerned for their safety too, right? Both people are. I'm not placing any blame here on either side. But let's say that this guy is actually afraid of getting shot by the cops. If he gets out of the car, he's got two guns pointed at him. And then he says, I'm scared. And the cop says, you should be. I think that that's not a good way to handle the situation because they confirm his fears. They confirm his fears that he's about to get shot and killed. Get out! Get out the car! Get out now! You're being stopped by a Now, actually, I'm looking at this other. The officer here has a taser out, uh, not a, not a pistol, and the other officer has a pistol, I believe. So it looks like one of them has a pistol, the other one has a taser. So let me correct myself there. The officer here is holding his taser. You're not cooperating at this point right now. You're under arrest for, for you're being detained. Okay, you're being detained for obstruction of justice. Violation. I do not have to get out. Really? Really? Get, your get, hands get out of the car now. Get out of the car. Get your hands off me. Get out of the Get your hands off me. You know what? Now, this is escalating to, you know, as far as use of force escalation goes. He put away his non-lethal, but he grabs him, and the guy's not compliant. You know, I'll give the officers that. The guy's not complying. But I can also see how he would be afraid, right? So I can see him thinking if he does comply, damned if you do, damned if you don't. I think that that's really the scenario here. He's damned if he does. In his mind, if, if he's acting in good faith, right? And that's where I'm, I'm, I'm starting with all that. Acting in good faith. He's afraid. He's not complying. If he complies, he's afraid he's going to get shot. If he doesn't comply, he's afraid he's going to get shot. I don't know. This is a difficult situation. And this officer here who just grabbed him is not making it any better by confirming his fears by saying you should be. I think that is like the key Moment when I watched the, when I w- initially watched this video when the guy says I'm afraid and the cop says you should be to me that was the moment where my empathy really leans towards the driver here the second lieutenant because I'd be freaked out too. Hey. Hands off me. Not a Get problem. Off Back up, Daniel. Do anything. Sir, shaking up the spray. Car. Oh, that pe- have you ever been pepper sprayed? Do you guys remember when I showed you the video of me being pepper sprayed on this show and I screamed like a little girl or like a punk or whatever you want to call it. Sorry to the ladies out there. It is, it sucks. Getting pepper sprayed totally super duper sucks. Sir, hey, sir. Get out of the car now. Sir, look. I'm trying to talk to you. Get out. Okay. I'm trying to talk to you. Get out. Just get out of my car. Can you please relax? Get out. Can you please relax? Get out of the car right now. Now. This is not how you treat a vet. Uh, I'm actively serving this country and this is how you're going to treat me. Now, I don't like that. I mean, it's not like he's taking a lot of time to think about what he's going to say. We can spend all day 
criticizing every single moment of this, but let's say you're in the military, right? People out there, folks, and you're driving around and you just say to a stranger that you're a veteran or you have a uniform on, it doesn't really mean anything. People stolen valor, people wear uniforms to get out of things. People wear uniforms for special treatment. People wear uniforms to maybe elude the police. Okay. So they don't know this guy. They've never seen his ID. They don't know who he is. They probably, or I'm going to say they definitely should not assume anything about this guy. They, he, they should not assume he's even in the military just because he has a uniform on. Okay. People acting, you know, act crazy all the time. I didn't do anything. Okay. Whoa, hold on. Okay. What's going on? Hold on. Air Force is deployed. Get out of the car. Get out of the car now. So they sprayed him. He sprayed him about three times. You know, he, he's going to be, his, his eyes are going to be burning. He, it's going to be difficult for him to breathe. That OC spray is going to fill up the car. So every breath he takes now is going to be worse and worse for him. So I actually think if you if the cops in this situation and he's able to OC inside the car, that'd probably be a good way to get some compliance, some compliance through, you know, a use of a non-lethal because this guy's going to definitely want to get out of this car now. I will say that. I don't know if he was I don't know if it was legit to OC spray him or not, but I mean, it's effective. Get out of the car now. Sir, just get out the car. It does, if you're, here, here, but then I'll say this too, and I don't know police policies or anything like that, right? I'm not going to pretend to, but I do know a thing or two about OC spray. Once this dude gets OC sprayed, it's going to be difficult for him to follow. It's going to be even more difficult for him to follow instructions. So they, it'd be, OC spray would be better if they could OC spray him and then get, and then get their hands on him. But to OC spray, OC spray somebody and then try to get them to follow your instructions, it's probably going to make this more difficult. The fact that they can't grab him, they can't get him, OC spray is just going to make everything more difficult now. Get out of the car now! Get out of the car and get on the ground now and get him again! I don't even want to reach my seatbelt. Take your seatbelt off and get out of the car! Get out of the car now! Listen, take off your seatbelt and get out of the car. Look, I'm just gonna just please. You're gonna do what you're told. Get out of the car. Look, take your seatbelt off and get out of the look, Take your seatbelt off. Look, my hands are. See, even he's coughing from the OC spray because it has a pretty big radius of once it's sprayed, you breathe in the fumes even from pretty far away, like 10 feet, 15 feet. If the wind blows, you're gonna be breathing it in. So. He can't even get his seatbelt off now. You learn, like the reason that you get OC sprayed in training is so that you learn that you can still function afterwards because it cripples people. It literally makes people worthless. Once you get sprayed, there is nothing, like for a lot of people, they cannot do the simplest functions after getting OC sprayed. That's why you have to get OC sprayed. And then you have to complete the obstacle course. It's like a confidence course. You're learning how to... How to proceed, how to move, how to act with intense pain, difficulty breathing, and inability to see. Take your seatbelt off and get out of the car. My hands are out. Don't reach in there, Daniel. Don't reach in there. My hands are out. Please. Please. Look. This is really messed up. My dog is in the back. My dog is... Oh, so he's got a dog in the car. I feel horrible for the dog. Damn. I feel terrible for the dog who just got OC sprayed. Ah, oh, jeez, that sucks. Okay, right Get now. out of the car. Take your seatbelt off. What are you, a specialist, Corporal? What are you? I'm a lieutenant. Lieutenant. I'm a lieutenant. I mean, not really, bro. You're a second lieutenant, but. Get out of the car. Take your seatbelt off and get out of the car. You made this way more difficult than it had to be. If you just comply, get out of the car. I'm reaching for my seatbelt. Fine. Take your seatbelt off and get out of the car. Straight onto the ground. Straight onto the ground. Ma'am, can you, can you leave, please? Down. Let's go. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. Get on the ground or you're getting sprayed again. Get on the ground. Can you please talk to me about what's going on? Get on the ground. On. Get on the ground now. So he just got kicked. At this point, he should have just gotten on the ground, I feel like. 
in his own best interest. He's out of the car. You know, it's di- after you get. I, I just I feel for him a little bit because he just got OC sprayed. You know, and sat there in it for a minute. But he's obviously not. I mean, he's not complying. That's true. But it's not always as easy as just comply. Although I feel like at this point, it it the situation seems to be de-escalating. You know, he's out of the car, but then they kick him. Like this dude's. I I I, I do kind of feel bad for this guy. Can you please talk to me Get about what's going on? Get on the ground. Can you please talk to me about what's yes, going sir. on? Yes, sir. You're not. Can you please talk to me about what's going on? Why am I being treated like this? Why? You're not cooperating. Get on the ground. Why am I being treated like this? In his mind, we know now he didn't do anything wrong, right? So in his mind, he's like, I'm not a criminal. Why is this happening to me? Why? I can't believe how did I get here? How did I get to a point where I got OC sprayed? I got pulled out of my car. I'm getting kicked. I'm getting put on the ground. My he's worried about I'd be worried about my dog in the car, right? So I'm thinking my I got my dog in the car, the door's open. I'm about to go to jail. What's going on? I just I'm driving home my new car. I'm driving home from duty. <sighs> Tough. This is really messed up. This is really Come messed on, up. Come on, sir. Sir, well, just what just you just what, this what, is what, really this is fucked up. Sir. This is fucked up. Sir. He's crying. He's crying. Fucked up. You know this is fucked up. Lay on the ground. Just lay flat. Lay flat for me, sir. You know this is fucked up. Sir, lay flat. Lay flat. This is fucked up. I can't fucking believe I'm being treated like this. And I'm fucking Get on the ground. Get on the ground. ground. Right there. Right there. What's that? It's gum. What the fuck? Get on the ground. It's gum. Sir, sir, can you just work with us? Can I... Just work with us. Lay down flat. Hold on. Lay down flat. Lay down flat. Now, I understand it from the police perspective, right? They're tra- Think about what police training is, right? They're trained for the worst case scenario. In their mind, they're thinking worst case scenario. In this guy's mind, he's thinking, I'm not a bad guy. Why would I get treated like this? But they've seen the videos of cops getting killed, of suspects not being handcuffed and then they get away or they grab their weapon or something like that. They become combative. People can become combative anytime. I, I get that. I, I totally understand why police act the way that they do, what they're concerned about. I t- I'm, I'm on board with that. I got it. And I can, I can feel for this guy too, though. He isn't a criminal. He's not a bad guy. He joined the army. You know, he's in the army. He's got a dog. He's trying to live his life. He's trying to go home. He's being combative. He's not complying. All that's true, but he's not a bad guy. So, you know, maybe this is his first interaction ever with law enforcement. I don't know about his record or anything like that. This, what if this is his first time ever, you know, being pulled over? And now he's got guns drawn on him. He he's he tried to drive to a, you know, gas station. I mean, I'm going to give both parties here the benefit of the doubt. Sir. Lay down, really I'm gonna take you. Lay down, you're gonna get paid. Fucked up. Lay down, you're gonna get paid. This All is right, fucked now put, up. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. This is fucked up. This is fucked up. I agree. All you have to do is listen. All right. Pay the three. One be in custody. This is fucked up. Can you open up the window for my dog? I ain't him choking. Can you open up the window, please? Right. Yes. Yeah, you hear what he said? And you open up the window for my dog, I hear him choking. Like, that's heartbreaking, man. That's tough. Yes, we will. Stand up, okay? All right, so the video ends there. But there's another, the video goes on to show them standing up, talking, they're having a conversation with this guy. They're having a good conversation. Uh, they talk like civilized people. They give him some options. They give him an option. But they give him an option to let him go. But he kind of like, it's a little, it's a little fishy. They give him an option to let him go. But he has to like admit that he was wrong, that kind of thing, or they they're like, or we can arrest you or whatever. And so, it, it, he's kind of a lose lose for me either way. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button up in the corner here and check out this next video. If you want, in the description down below, there's links where you can get Scuttlebutt Show merch and find out how you can support the channel. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to talking to you guys very soon.